don't worry about being as good as her, you're gonna be as good as you. I really like that saying. Um, so once you've hit rock bottom with jamming and you have just embarrassed yourself week after week, you do let a lot of things go until you come out the other end and you're like, bring it, bring it on. Nothing can take me down, I've been through it all. I grew up in a family that like the expectation was that you would play sports, but I never really found the thing that I enjoyed. A lot of my friends had all kind of, oh, we're gonna do this really cool new thing that's out there and play this sport that's contact and hang out with a bunch of women. And, and so I showed up in some like 1970s blue, they were like sneaker skates. I could skate-ish. I wasn't bad, and so I was allowed to scrimmage my first practice, and I knocked someone over. Yeah, it was out of play and totally illegal, but it was so great. Like, I was like, oh, a sport I love. Um, when I first started, it was solely about the big heads. Big, huge hits, having them fly into the crowd. Now what I try to do as a blocker on the track is a lot of patience, holding them back, versus using a big hit to take them out. For me, it's all about my legs. Um, the strength in my legs and my thighs to hold back opponents. Um, my team calls me Hulk Smash, and that's a big part of how I use my body to play roller derby. So as a woman with visible muscles, people are constantly commenting on it. I have been at formal events where someone has told me that I am emasculating to them when I'm standing in a formal dress it's so contrasting. And I, I love being in the derby community because it is this like pocket of safety where I can exist physically however I am. My teammates and people that are fans of our sport, they celebrate my body. I don't know, roller derby has given me so much in terms of confidence. I never felt like my body was worthy of space because of how it looked. And being in roller derby, it's like the more space you take up, the more valuable you are in some aspects. So I'm learning to own my space and own my body and be proud of that. It's all interconnected, the physical confidence, the mental confidence, the emotional confidence. And uh, when I was pulled up to wheels to jam, that was a moment where I knew that it was either go big or go home. You have, you have to perform at this level. And so if you let your doubt, your self-doubt, and your lack of confidence get in your head and take over, you're not gonna be able to perform. Uh, why I started playing roller derby is probably a little bit sadder than most people's reasons. Um, I had uh, quite a debilitating eating disorder and it looked like a a cool way for me to lose more weight. Uh, a few months into starting roller derby, I was at a trial ahead of making a team and we were speeding around the track, just like I saw in the game, and I started feeling really lightheaded. I hadn't eaten in probably three days at this point. I went home that night and I thought to myself, you need to decide between roller derby and your eating disorder right now and I chose roller derby and I'm so utterly thankful that I did because um, it's given me my whole life. I have one extreme in my field of hearing about how a woman's body is a crime scene or how a woman's body has been removed from her, how it's no longer her possession. And then I get to be in this environment where it's the extreme opposite. And to see women go out there and fucking jump the apex, and for me to look at them and know like they've experienced some kind of trauma with their body before, and now look what they're doing with their body, I just like that. How I use my body to play roller derby. It doesn't matter if you're small, because I guess I am small, but I don't feel small. 
I don't feel small when I'm jamming. I mean, you might come up against really big people, but it doesn't really matter to me. Although, in the off season, when I'm not training as much, I get really sad because my thighs shrank and then I don't want <laughs> And then I wanted to build them back up. I don't know, back home now I have people that are watching my games on the internet just like I used to watch games on the internet. Uh, just before I left New Zealand, my father said to me, go on, go and do that crazy sport of yours while, you're, while your knees are still good. Come back when you're all broken and we'll, we'll sort you out here once you're done. Uh, and that was all I needed to hear from my family was that they supported this ridiculous plan that I had to go to the other side of the world and play an amateur sport because it's changed my life, and why not? Um, I've never played in champs. I've only, I've been to playoffs, which is awesome, but I want to play in champs, and I want to make it past the first round in champs, win the Hydra. Um, I want to play for as long as I possibly can, and hopefully they'll have some type of, like, a seniors league in the future for when your body does give out, but you still want to keep playing. I feel strong, I feel proud, um, I feel honored, I feel alert, I feel feminine, um, I feel good in my body, um, I feel like I've discovered myself more than I've changed myself.